Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to day three here on Planet IMEX. This morning, we have got a fantastic keynote speaker for you coming up in about 15 minutes. But actually, we've got now 15 minutes with the CEO of the IMEX group, Karina Bauer, joining us live from Brighton and Hove on the south coast of England. Karina, good morning from the USA. How are you doing? Good morning and good afternoon, John. Very nice to see you. Excellent, excellent. Um, we are going to actually have you for about 15 minutes, as I said. I'm going to open up Q&A, Karina, before we get chatting. Um, we'd like to give people a chance to ask you a question or two if they can. So it's open now, not the live chat, please, but on the Q&A. We've got Karina for a few minutes. If you have anything particular you'd like to ask her, maybe about the creation of Planet IMEX, um, uh, or other things related to the role within IMEX and what IMEX are, are doing in the future, then please do put them through to Karina in the Q&A section. We'll try and get them through to her before the end of this session. Karina, it's Wednesday, nearly halfway through. Amazing experience on Monday, fun day. We discussed that yesterday. Looking back to yesterday, um, perhaps can I start with the keynote that opened up things, Daniel Fox. What a session. Yeah, fantastic session. It was, um, I put in social media, watching it was almost like a meditation in itself because Daniel's expression, his description of nature, not of as, uh, of, uh, as a place, but actually a way of thinking, I think was really profound. I think you said it as well. You need to watch the session a few times to really take in all the messages. Um, and of course, it was beautiful as well, because he is a photographer and videographer. And so I, I just thought it was a wonderful, wonderful start. And as nature is our talking point as well this year and next year, it was a wonderful way for us to express what we really mean by how we learn from nature. Um, so yeah, we, it was a wonderful session. We had two wonderful sessions sort of topping and tailing yesterday. So Daniel's to start us off and then Dear World to end us um, yesterday. And that was with our own David Broadus, um, who's our day-to-day -day base manager, but also a poet and a writer. And uh, he's a fantastic storyteller. And it was a really powerful, moving story, um, very personal that he told with Dear World yesterday. So I, I loved both of those uh, sessions sort of kicking us off and then sending us off to bed. Yeah, the reaction to both of those was incredible, wasn't it? Um, yeah. the images in Daniel's session, as you say. Also, his voice, it was so calming. I've never, it, it, it almost was monotone, which sounds negative, but it was it was just the perfect pitch delivery combined yeah. with the images uh, and video of nature. And of course, his story and his experiences too. And yes, um, Robert X Fogarty and, and David brought us, as you say, in the Dear World session at the end, got incredible feed. I was, I was watching the feed come through here audience engagement as you say uh, both of those sessions probably need to be watched again to get the most of them so great yeah what other ones were you personally involved in yesterday and how did they go yeah, well, um, the, uh, the um, other sessions I thought were, well, th they were all fantastic. Obviously, there was the uh, indomitable uh, Mike Dominguez talking about networking. I personally learned a lot. And it was great hearing him talk about how he prepares, actually, for an event, whether it's online or in person. And so to really get the most out of that event and also follows up. And we, we're always talking to our exhibitors about following up. Uh, their events um, uh, and their contacts. And of course, you need to be very deliberate, I suppose, about your networking. Um, David Allison, that, that's another amazing session. And because he's really talking about, I guess, um, he, he links it back to behavioral science, you know, what, what you do, John, um, and really the need to go beyond demographics to really understand the drivers that are going to influence people, which is their values. So I really love what David um, does and and what he's talking about. I think we've got a lot to learn from him. And of course, there were other fantastic sessions like She Means Business, really focusing on um, fully on diversity and inclusion. Cvent did a great session looking at the future of virtual and hybrid events. So um, there, were, there were loads of great sessions yesterday. Those are just a few of the, the highlights for me. Perfect. OK, well, what about today? Another packed session, the second and final day of general education. Um, we have Brian Franzo, which of whom I'm going to introduce in a few minutes. Other than Brian, um, what are you looking forward to? 
Yeah, so I'm involved in a lot of sessions today. Um, I'm really looking forward to Brian's, but I won't give away what he's talking about and, and the way he's doing it. But I think we've got a lot to learn from Brian just in how you engage people in the virtual world. Uh, so looking forward to that. Uh, we've got Robert Kenwood again today. Yesterday he was talking about um, setting yourself up for success in terms of your career. Today he's talking about how to market yourself. Uh, we've also got the fa fabulous Meg Fazy talking about digital sponsorship opportunities. MPI are talking about the future. They're looking at the meetings outlook. Um, always important, no more so than now. Um, I'm going to be personally involved in a She Means Business session today, looking at women's leadership styles, how you make tough decisions, what we can learn from the past few months. Um, also this afternoon, really excited to be following on with the nature theme. There's an interview that I've done um, called Nature Works, Building a Regenerative Events Industry. And that's with uh, Guy Bigwood and Janet Spearstead, who we've worked with this year on our research report which is also out today so please do look out for that on in our underwater world or on the IMEX website uh, and we'll be talking about that study and, and what it means for the meetings industry and then um, we've also got Robert Dunsmore today talking about um, uh, different creative strategies for online events. So, you know, being six months into this and people having done so much online, uh, somebody like Robert is a really sort of expansive, broad thinker and is going to give us some great creative ideas for, for the next steps uh, for online events. And then we're closing with meditation again with Lee Papa. Uh, and for those who want something a little bit more high energy, we've got the wonderful song division at the end of the day. Excellent. Um, I think the nature one that you're doing um, is really interesting because I think it does tie in with Daniel's session. Um, we, we touched a little bit in the Q&A I had with him about the industry's uh, policy towards environmentalism, impact on nature, travel. But your session is going to go a lot more you know, deeply into the policies um, that the industry needs to follow and should be following and the regenerative, the regenerative uh, um, economy that it needs to to sort of adopt so yes i think those two sessions really do link quite well together um looking forward uh to thursday and friday give us a, a snapshot of what we can expect there slightly different days aren't they yeah very different days so we've had sort of three very packed days of lots of sessions uh lots of short sessions if you like and you know with a, a variety of topics and themes um tomorrow's a very different day so tomorrow we've got um our specialist education. So we've got um, 100 students coming together for our Virtual Future Leaders Forum. We've got 100 association professionals coming together for a, a uh, the Association Leadership Forum, which is a three, four hour workshop. We've also got our EMF program. We usually do that in person. So that's really for high level uh, corporate planners. Um, and we also have a new event called the Independent Agency Forum. So we're really pleased to be bringing about 60 or 70 independent agency owners together again for a full sort of workshop session. So these are sort of longer form um, private sessions. Also on the Brit platform, we've got um, regional updates from all over the world. So if somebody wants to get a real overview of what's happening in different regions of the world in terms of how they're opening up, whether they're holding events, what the future holds, really uh, encourage you to look at those. And we've worked with both Destinations International and the ECA team to put, pull those together. And then also tomorrow, we've got our partners, Event MB, doing one of their one Wonderful events and for those who've been uh, following them they've been doing monthly events which have been highly popular and tomorrow is the virtual um, tech day so they're going to be not only talking about the future of virtual events but really delving deep into the tech that we can use and they're going to be doing product demos as well so I think tomorrow's a very different day um, and it's kind of longer form sessions it's going to be really really interesting. Great. I'm happy to give a shout out to Julius and the event MB team for giving fantastic content uh, in the last six months since uh, since the coronavirus hit, really. Yeah. OK. Um, well, listen, we've got loads of questions coming in. Could you give us a few minutes for some Q&A? 
Absolutely. But before I do, I just want to mention our community day on, on Friday because we've got over 30 of our IMEX partners putting on different sessions. You have to register for all of them separately, but do go and look at them on our listing in the schedule um, and, and pick them out. And, and just amazing um, really commitment from all our partners, from our media partners to the associations, all putting together fantastic content on Friday. Yeah, it's a it's a huge group or industry initiative, Planet IMAX, isn't it? It's partnerships yeah. and collaboration all the way. Okay, um, right, we've got a we've got a few minutes. I'm going to give you the one uh, that's been upvoted the most, Karina. Um, I don't know how much detail you you can go into this, but but give it a go. You said to me before, there's no question you hopefully couldn't answer, so let's give it a go. What are some of the key changes that IMAX made technology from technology perspective regarding this? Planet IMEX compared to the last one, um, because the addition this time is just flawless. So, so what did you do in a technical perspective, platforms, changes from a technical perspective that's given people the experience they're enjoying? Yeah, I think the main thing, uh, the summary is that we streamlined. So last time, you know, we, we did it in five weeks and we just threw a lot of different tech together and, and uh, tried to pull put it together as best as we could. This time we really um, thought about the user journey. Last time we had to create the user journey after we had decided on the tech. This time we did it the other way around. And so that's led to hopefully a more streamlined user journey and a more streamlined experience. And we also learned the need for production. And so hopefully people have noticed um, a higher production value in the content that we've been putting out and how we've been doing that. And that was also something that we learned. Yeah, I think um, everybody was amazed in April, then May when you post bowl cancelled, I suppose, uh, Planet, uh, sorry, um, IMAX in Frankfurt for this year, but then had Planet IMAX edition one going in six weeks, an incredible turnaround. So yeah, you were sort of reverse engineering it at that point, but um, yeah. people are thrilled with the experience that this week is giving them, Karina. Thank um, you. Quite a personal question. How has it been for you to lead the team through the creation of Planet IMAX? Um, well, it's been both difficult and fantastic, actually. So difficult because we are all learning on the job. Um, I guess like many organisers, you, you don't know what you don't know. So, you know, when we're doing our live events, we're kind of a perfectly oiled machine. We're set up uh, to be super efficient and we know what the pitfalls are. We know what to look out for. In the virtual world, you don't even know what questions to ask sometimes. So things sort of, you kind of find out about things at the last minute and then you have to, to work out how to solve those problems. But it's been fantastic in the sense that um, all the barriers, if there were, there weren't that many barriers in our team, you know, we're a pretty small tight team, but if there were barriers, those have been broken down and people have just volunteered to do jobs that are outside what they would normally do. They have, um, you know, work their socks off to learn with each other. And it's been amazing to see. And, you know, if you think about Monday Fun Day, there was our ops and finance team who put that that program together. Um, and they just did a phenomenal job. And, and um, you know, it's, it's just been fantastic to see the collaboration. So it's been hard at times because I, you don't always know what to direct people to do because you're learning with them but it's also been fantastic for us. And those are some of the things that we want to capture and keep for the future. Thank you, Karina. I'm going to leave it there. Apologies if you did put a question in. Um, we only had a chance for a couple, but um, Karina, thank you very much indeed for joining us. I know you've got another very, very busy day. Um, again, thanks and congratulations from the whole industry. And I look forward to seeing you in some sessions later on in the day. Thank you very much, John, and thanks to everybody. And I'll try and take a look at the questions and, and answer them in another way if I can. Fantastic. Thanks, Corinne.